Welcome back, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, to a brand new interactive what if. What if Avengers Infinity War, the interactive Marvel's what if. You're probably wondering what is an interactive video? Well, you have four different scenarios and choices where you can choose your own path and see where that path leads you. It will lead you to a variant world, whether it's a good alternate ending or maybe a darker one. But that being said, I do want to get a couple more YouTubers on this, so I do want to invite anybody who is a fan fiction writer, if they want to come onto the channel and do a collaboration, you're more than welcome to. I know right now, I am talking to a few Star Wars channels, and we're trying to come up with uh, a couple ideas on an interactive Star Wars what if, so stay tuned for that, I cannot wait. With that being said, choose your path now. Choice A. Bruce goes to Titan and hulks out. While Spider-Man was battling to free Doctor Strange, Bruce Banner didn't want to be useless. He wanted to join in and help his friends during such an important battle. He ran after Spider-Man and observed his surroundings. Although he didn't have the muscle strength, he had the intelligence. Bruce planned on making calls out and staying away from the combat, but his plans changed when Spider-Man came to him with the unconscious body of Doctor Strange. As soon as Spider-Man bounced over to him, a giant beam crashed to the terrain and sucked the three of them in. They were stuck inside of a ship with no way out. Spider-Man stuck with Bruce and tried to free them but it was no use. All Peter Parker could do was tell Tony what was happening. They were brought into a spaceship that looked like a donut. The inside was wide and dark, like spikes of clear white were jabbed through their cheeks and bodies in an attempt to get the time stone off of Doctor Strange. He was reluctant, which led to more pain. Bruce was seeing red. His vision was hazy and he felt as though the Hulk would burst free at any moment. However, before he could, Tony and Doctor Strange's cape arrived to help. The cape distracted Ebony Maw while Tony tried to find a way to get the spikes away from his friends. Peter Parker suggested something straight out of the movies, Alien. And Tony agreed, Elebent irritated by the pop culture reference. As soon as the missile made contact with the side of the spaceship, Bruce, Peter, and Doctor Strange were free. The torturer was sent out into space. Before they could reach Titan, they were interrupted by a crew of what seemed to be space pirates, although one of them was from Earth, and they knew Thor. Together, they made a plan to stop Thanos when they arrived on Titan. By the time they got there, Bruce was anxious. He was biting his nails and tapping his foot against the ground. He couldn't stop pacing no matter how many times Tony tried to snap him out of it. It felt as though there was a hint of green on Bruce's skin. Bruce didn't have time to think about it. They were on Titan, and it was time to gear up. Tony said Bruce should stay out of it, but Bruce decided to watch from the shadows as they prepared to battle their greatest foe yet. He spoke with Hulk as much as he could. Hulk was terrified and Bruce couldn't blame him. He was scared too. It wasn't every day the fate of the universe was at stake. However, Bruce had a feeling they couldn't win without the Hulk. Thanos was larger and more powerful than all of them. Hulk too. But Bruce had hope that Hulk could make the difference. Bruce waited as the fight broke out. Tony used his suit to provide utility to the others. Doctor Strange opening portals to allow the others to get close enough to make their attacks. Bruce kept on with his nails and watching. He swore he saw his skin turn green. But the moment passed as quickly as it came. As the fight intensified, Bruce's emotions spiked. His adrenaline pumped through his veins until he couldn't see straight anymore. Thanos was powerful enough to hold back some of the best fighters Bruce had ever seen. Thanos defeated Hulk once, but could he do it again? When the fight reached its peak, Bruce decided he couldn't wait any longer. The need to help his friends overwhelmed him and he blocked out of any fear that was left inside of his system. 
Although terror still sat in the back of his mind, it fizzled away in favor of the Hulk. Bruce's skin morphed, his muscles expanding and contracting as his veins popped. In less than half a minute, Hulk was present. Bruce's clothes fell to the surface of Titan, Hulk kicking them away and hopping forward to joining the fight. It seemed as though time stopped for a moment. The other fighters paused when they heard Hulk's roar. Even Thanos took a second to observe the new opponent. Hulk smashed into Thanos and knocking him back. Without the stones, Thanos beat Hulk. Hulk knew he couldn't win on his own, but with the help of the others, they could take down Thanos once and for all. That was exactly what they did. While Hulk distracted Thanos, Spider-Man used webs to tie the giant to the ground. Tony joined in. One by one, the members joined and used their combined strength to subdue Thanos. Mantis fell on Thanos' head thanks to Doctor Strange, and Thanos fell silent. Hulk went over to help Tony and Peter take off the gauntlet. With the Hulk's superior strength, he was able to get it off rather quickly. The stones were now in their possession, and Thanos was still quiet. The others, Quill, went to speak with Thanos, only to find out that Gamora was dead. Quill punched Thanos in the head, until he was free from the trance that Mantis put him under. However, it was already far too late. Hulk had the gauntlet, and he had Tony protecting him. Thanos did all he could to get the gauntlet back, but it never worked. The combined efforts of the team caused Thanos, the Mad Titan, to lose. Fearing Thanos would come back to haunt them, they killed him. Thanos was dead, and Hulk had the gauntlet. They won. They saved the universe. All that was left was getting back to Earth to inform the others. They left Titan with the help of the Guardians, returning home. In time to see the Battle of Wakanda was a success. Steve was grateful to see Tony again, but there was high tensions between the Avengers. It was like any remnants of the old days was gone. Bruce decided to slip into the shadows once again trying to work on himself while the others worked on forgiving each other. Over the next few years, Bruce practiced a healthier relationship with the Hulk. It took countless months and even years of training, but he had a balanced life. They defeated Thanos, but Bruce didn't want to know what was yet to come. There was a still deep fear inside of him, a fear that it was far from over yet. Choice B Captain America goes to Titan, and Iron Man stays in Wakanda. Instead of Doctor Strange going to Iron Man for help, he chose Steve Rogers. Steve was quick to come to his aid. They didn't have much time for planning thanks to the children of Thanos attacking. During the encounter, Steve attempted to save Doctor Strange. His plan failed. Instead, he was sucked into a spaceship alongside Spider-Man. They were rescued by the Guardians of the Galaxy, who broke into the ship and killed Ma, freeing the trio. They're alone to battle Thanos on Titan. They liked their odds, they had a strong crew, but Steve didn't want to get too confident. They made a plan to hide from Thanos, giving the appearance that only Doctor Strange survived the crash. As Strange was distracting him, Steve moved with Spider-Man to perform a surprise attack. Getting the first blow would give them an advantage, even if it was only a small one. Steve and Spider-Man did an attack together. Steve threw his shield up, Spider-Man attaching a web on it and soaring in the sky. He shot a web down and blinding Thanos before he could react. That signaled the fight. Doctor Strange used his spells to aid the battle, allowing the heroes to jump in and out of portals and hiding themselves behind illusions. However, Thanos had enough stones to possess a much larger threat than anything they had ever faced. Meanwhile, at Wakanda, they were preparing for war. The rest of Steve's merry band went with Tony. They knew it was a risk considering what had happened in the past between them, but they needed the help. They knew Thanos would come for Vision, and there was only so much they could do. They managed to rescue Wanda and Vision at the last second, but it wasn't enough. Tony agreed to help. Reluctantly, Steve's friends knew about Wakanda and took Tony there. After meeting with Black Panther and determining they could get the stone out of Vision's head, 
Tony opted to call in his support. He had a new suit that could help, and he wouldn't let it go to waste. As soon as the attackers came, Tony took charge of the fight. With the advanced suit, he was able to eliminate as many enemies as possible from the sky. He shot rockets into those giant machines. He took down all the blades in sight and used his entire arsenal to destroy anything that dared to hurt his friends. Since Tony dealt with the other blades, Wanda stayed with Vision and protected him. He never left the lab, and the stone was removed from Vision's head. As soon as it was out, the fight was almost over. Thanos' army had been pushed back, but what about Thanos? On Titan, Steve was fighting as best as he could. He dueled Thanos by himself to keep his friends safe. They did all they could to stop him, even subduing him at one point, only for Peter Quill to punch the mad Titan in the face. They ended up losing their fight on Titan. Steve almost dead as he laid in a pool of his own blood. Doctor Strange traded the Time Stone, thinking it would save them thanks to visions he saw from the future. Thanos went to Wakanda and left the others on Titan. He saw his army invading Wakanda and went to join. With the stones, he turned the tide of the battle. What once was a guaranteed win was now a loss. Thanos marched his way to the last stone, while Wanda rushed to destroy it. As soon as the stone cracked, Thanos arrived, and the explosion caused a massive destruction that separated the Wakandan guards from Wanda. Vision did his best to help Wanda escape, but Thanos was already using the Time Stone to reverse what had been done. By the time Wanda and Vision realized what was happening, it was far too late. Thanos knocked them back and took the stone for himself. That made Thanos the most powerful being out there. However, Tony and Thor came. Neither of them had fear when they fought Thanos. Tony used all of the gadgets he had at his disposal, preparing to use his nanotech if necessary. Thanos was far too powerful for Tony and Thor. Tony and the God of Thunder were knocked over, which caused the Mad Titan to perform the snap that massacred countless. Among them was Steve Rogers, meaning the entire crew on Titan was evaporated. That left half of the Avengers, the half that were on Earth. Tony was defeated, and he watched as Thanos left. The entire universe changed in that very moment, the Avengers watching their friends fade away before them. Vision witnessed Wanda's death, but he survived, much to his dismay. Fueled by rage, the remaining Avengers wished to balance the scale and go find Thanos. Together they banded up and came up with a plan, thanks to Rocket Raccoon. Not long after the snap, when they got to Thanos, he already destroyed the stones. It was over. They lost. Tony decided to start a family and settle down. Steve wasn't there to drive the force, to try and bring the fallen. So Tony stayed settled down. Tony didn't have the same motivation as before, since he never saw Peter die. In fact, he didn't even know if Steve and Peter were alive or gone. He chose not to think about it. Even though Natasha sought Tony out, there was no convincing him to join. He didn't want to do anything to risk his good life. So, the Avengers never succeeded in bringing the Fallen back. Thanos won. It was one of the possibilities Doctor Strange saw, but not the one where they won. There was no way to save the dead. The Avengers had come to terms with their failure, and tried to fix what they had and not what they lost. Choice C. The snap doesn't affect the Avengers. The Avengers failed to protect Earth. Thanos took the final stone and executed the snap they feared. However, as the ones in the battlefield fell, the Avengers found themselves still standing. Not a single one of them faded to dust. Even on Titan, none of them joined the countless who passed away. When the dust settled, confusion set in. How had they all survived? Did Thanos respect them enough to spare them? However, there wasn't no time for questions. They had to fight before this change was permanent. They banded together and first tried to find Tony. There were no leads or signals. They were left in the dark. The Guardians of the Galaxy and Doctor Strange were no part of the Avengers. Therefore, they faded away and left Peter and Tony alone with Nebula on Titan. They managed to get a ship. But after that, it was a futile effort. They couldn't find Earth with their limited supply and time. Through it all, they never gave up. 
when Captain Marvel came for them, it was a perfect timing as they were about to run out of air. From there, they went back home and they were grateful to find their friends, and they were alive. All of the Avengers were present and ready for battle. They tracked Thanos and found him on a farm. He used the stones to destroy the stones, meaning there was no way to reverse the snap. However, with the increased team of the Avengers, they had a better chance now. They had every arsenal and skill set they needed to brainstorm ideas. Sam Wilson suggested looking for the man he called Tic Tac which resulted in them finding Ant-Man much sooner than expected. Ant-Man proposed his time-traveling idea, and since Tony was there, he was inspired to help. Although he was in a bad place with Steve, Tony was relivid. There was a way to fix their mistakes, especially a solution that came so soon after the failure of losing the stones. Tony did his best to find the best way to do time travel. It took weeks of work, using both old and new tech, but he found a way. Together, the entire Avengers crew banded together and went to war for the ones who died in the snap. Since they had a large team, their plan went much smoother than it would have otherwise. They had every member of the Avengers helping them. They still split up for the best results, but their team weren't two or three people. Each team had at least four people, including the team that went to Vormir. Natasha, Clinton, Vision, and Wanda went to Vormir to find the Soul Stone. When they found out the truth, they realized what they needed to do. They all fought over it. Eventually, Wanda jumped. With her superior abilities, she threw, she threw them away and told Vision it wasn't worth risking him considering there was a chance the higher powers wouldn't see him as a soul. So Wanda jumped and sacrificed her life. The survivors were made with guilt, especially Vision, although Wanda was now with her brother. All the Avengers were successful with their missions, gathering back up to continue the fight. They were devastated by the loss of Wanda, Vision making a small grave for her before the next snap. Since Bruce Banner couldn't control Hulk yet, they had to debate over who could take the snap. They came to the conclusion that it should either be Thor or Captain Marvel. Tony designed the gauntlet, and when it was done, Thor ended up doing the snap. He made the case that since he was a god, he could survive. Although he wasn't in a great mental spot, he was physically prepared to do the job. Tony gave the gauntlet to the God of Thunder, and he snapped the fallen back into their proper places. Thor was damaged thanks to the powers of the stones, his entire arm covered with muck that it looked like it was causing him agony. Thor insisted he was fine, just in time too. Only a minute after the snap occurred, Thanos and his goons somehow found them. The Avengers were separated from the explosions, but they found each other outside after some time. Together, the Avengers fought Thanos and his army. It was a difficult battle, and it resulted in countless injuries. But the tide turned when Doctor Strange showed up with the Guardians of the Galaxy and other factions, and they were ready to fight. They went to war, clashing together in a sea of light that blinded everyone on the battlefield. There were beams of energy coming from Tony and Pepper, lightning emitting from Thor's body, blasts of ignetic energy bursting out of Black Panther's suit, and the list went on. Wanda wasn't in the final battle. Clint, Vision, and Natasha fought hard on behalf of her and they succeeded. Vision carried the gauntlet away, while Clint and Captain Marvel distracted Thanos. They distracted Thanos for long enough, allowing Vision to take the stones to the van. Not that it mattered seeing as the Avengers were winning, they held back Thanos' forces, and they were able to beat them after a grueling battle. By the end of it, the Mad Titan realized that he had lost and glanced around without a word. Thor finished him off. It was over. Together, the Avengers got the stones and put them back in their proper places. Their mission worked. Peter and Tony were alive, and Tony could pursue his life with Pepper. There was no telling what the future would hold, but Thanos was gone. The stones were gone. Thor was healing. Wanda had passed away. But the Avengers honored her. The universe was okay, all thanks to the Avengers refusing to give up. Choice D. Kang joins the final battle. 
the Avengers were battling for the universe against Thanos. The defeated heroes on Titan awaited their fate, while the Avengers fought the powerful Thanos. Thanos won, taking the final stone and extinguishing half of all life from the universe. Many of the Avengers fell, but they had no time to mourn. As soon as they learned of the demise of their friends, they were faced with a new foe. A foe deadlier as Thanos, only in a different way. The man came toward them until he could see him. He seemed like an average man, but there was something about the way he carried himself that had the Avengers staying on high alert. He didn't fight them, he didn't try to antagonize them in any way. No, Kang had already seen his fate. The Avengers would destroy him if he fought them head on. Even with half of the Avengers gone, Kang knew he was no match for all of them at once. Not only were they angry at the loss of their friends, but they were looking for a way to solve their problems. If Kang proved himself to be a problem, his fate would change. Instead of fighting, he chose the long game, the manipulative game. Kang told the Avengers he came from another world that could feel the disturbances in the universe. He told them he felt a strong disturbance on Earth and rushed over, wishing to solve it before it got out of control. The Avengers were vulnerable. They lost all of their friends, some of them dying in their own arms. It was the perfect time to strike. Kang offered a solution to them, a way to bring back the Fallen. He wished to help them as much as he could, and told them to scan for more disturbances like the one caused on that day. Rocket Raccoon agreed, and together, they found where Thanos had went, but not before another superhero showed up to aid them. Her name was Captain Marvel, and Kang saw her potential. She was powerful, and he could use this to his advantage. Together, they went to Thanos' retirement spot and took him down. They found out the stones were destroyed, meaning there was no way to bring the fallen back. Kang saw his chance. Now they were even more vulnerable. Half of the population was gone. Kang preferred quick conquest, but he didn't mind changing it up, playing the long game. He decided he could help lead Earth back to glory. He could trick and manipulate them into serving him. From there, he could conquest the rest of the worlds around him. All of his variants, all his past, present, and future selves would help him. They would help him take over yet another world. Thanks to his advanced tech, he could put himself all around Earth to keep it in line. There would never be a threat for rebellion. And that was exactly what Kang did. He slipped through the ranks of the Avengers, never giving them a reason not to trust him. After he spoke with Captain Marvel, she confirmed she had heard of a planet he came from. He didn't actually come from there, but throughout his conquests, he knew of a planet where the aliens could see disturbances. Captain Marvel knew of it through her time traveling the stars, which led the Avengers to trust in Kang's story. With his enhanced intelligence, Kang secretly made chips he could put inside each Avenger to control them. Especially Captain Marvel, he could use them in his future conquests. So, he spent months perfecting his technology and growing in size. First, he gained the trust of Captain America. When Steve and him were alone, Kang knocked him unconscious using more of his advanced tech. The chip went inside Steve and he was now under Kang's control. From there, the Conqueror took out each Avenger one by one. Even Tony, who was in space and saved by Captain Marvel, before he was put under his control. The Avengers became Kang's puppets, and he knew just how to use them. Together, they could journey throughout the worlds and multiverses. Kang's goal of conquest would be complete. Kang became the unquestionable ruler of Earth. He ruled over the Avengers and enforced his ways upon the population. Seeing as the Avengers were on his side, there were no threats he had to worry about. He had conquered yet another world. In mere months, he succeeded, where so many others had failed. Thanos destroyed half of the population in the universe, meaning Kang could easily overtake the other worlds with the help of the Avengers. The Avengers could be the Enforcers, while Kang was the friendly force ready to help the desperate civilizations back in their order. When Earth was his, Kang set out to rule over the known universe. Together using the supplies the Avengers provided, Kang accomplished his mission. 
Captain Marvel was his most useful asset, seeing as she was used to see over the universe. They lost some Avengers along the way, such as a stubborn Bruce Banner, who couldn't turn into the Hulk no matter how hard he tried. However, what mattered was Kang's goal was completed. He took over yet another universe. Now, he had to make his next plan. The Avengers were his pawns, and he would be sure to use them. And that is going to be the complete interactive Avengers Infinity War Marvel's What If. What did you think about all the different choices? How did you enjoy the final wild card with choice D, with Kang being in Avengers Infinity War? I think it would be a very interesting set of events, and it's very different from what I've done before on the channel, taking so many different alternate storylines and putting them in one video. What choice did you choose in the comments down below? Let me know. And also, I do want to say, starting at just $1 a month, you can subscribe to my Patreon to get exclusive behind-the-scenes content, and if you want to have your request made, there's actually a tier going on right now where you can have that request be made, so I would highly suggest that you take a look. That being said, do make sure to subscribe, like, share if you enjoy these videos. Videos are going to be posted every Monday, Wednesday, and also Fridays, as well as the weekends. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Peace out.